Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Jab, and welcome to my camera comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, the new OnePlus 8 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And we're kicking off with some rear video. This is being shot at 4K30 with the rear cameras on all three phones, and I'm also switching between the microphones. So you can see the little speaker icon. Now, I'm not a professional photographer by any stretch, uh, but I'm gonna give you my thoughts about the cameras as we go along, but I also wanna hear what you think as well. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna put a poll uh, so you guys can vote which one you think was the best and then also let me know why in the comments below. So let's kick off with some video. Again, being shot at 4K30 on all three. Full disclosure, I'm using my once daily lockdown walk to get this footage and I am all by myself. As you can see though, stabilization is actually really impressive across the board. But what stands out to me is the S20 is noticeably darker and it also has a slightly warmer color profile as if someone's put a more cinematic LUT over it. To my eye, the OnePlus and iPhone look more true to life. Now let me show you how the video compares between the different lenses. This is being shot with the main lens, but then if we switch out to the ultra wide, you can see the OnePlus 8 isn't nearly as wide as it is on the other two phones. Then if we go back to the main lens and then zoom into two times on the iPhone, three on the OnePlus and four times on the S20, and then pinching into 10 times digital zoom on all three, and finally up to 50 times on the S20, 30 on the OnePlus and 10 on the iPhone. The S20 is certainly the most detailed, but it is also much darker. All right, let's do a focus test and see how quickly and also smoothly they transition. And I'd say the OnePlus is the fastest, the iPhone is the smoothest, and the S20 is, well, inconsistent at best. I am using the latest software as of mid-April, but I think maybe the Exynos chip may be somewhat to blame here. In lower light, straight away I'm drawn to the iPhone for its dynamic range. The sun isn't as blown out while everything in the foreground is brighter and better exposed than the others. We're also starting to see a few more judders in the stabilization, most noticeably I think on the S20. Now at night time, just look how different all three phones are when it comes to color. And actually, I'd say the S20 is the closest to real life. It really is an orange street lamp. The iPhone is a close second, and the HDR helps even out the highlights from the street lamp. But while the OnePlus is sharp, the color is way off. As I'm walking, you can see the S20 is juddering more than the others. The stabilization can't keep up as well. Turning the corner though, it's interesting because it's a white, not blue light at the end of the street. The OnePlus seems to have corrected its white balance and so now is the most accurate. And the iPhone looks good, but it is slightly lacking in detail. All right, let's move on to look at a few photos, starting with the ultra wide lens and then onto the main, and then the telephoto lens with their respective optical zooms. I think the iPhone offers the most natural colors here, although we do get the shortest zoom. Then up to 30 times digital zoom, although the iPhone maxes out at 10 times. The S20 is clearly out in front here. And then finally, if we jump up to its crazy 100 times space zoom, but also digitally crop in on the other two to match, the S20 is the zoom champion. Now what about a couple of completely candid, definitely not posed for portrait shots? Well, there's obviously a different look to each of them. And I think the iPhone comes out on top in terms of natural skin tone and the color of my t-shirt and how it handles the reflection highlight on my forehead. The iPhone again has the most realistic colors of both my skin tone and the white cabinets in the background. I think that's enough of my face for a few minutes, so back to some regular photos. And all three look great, there's not a whole lot in it here. The iPhone's HDR consistently brings up the shadows and gives us a more evenly lit, although arguably flatter looking photo. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it can look a little fake, and for example here, the grass looks a little unrealistically bright and lacking in shadow and depth. The S20 definitely loses the most detail in the darker areas, particularly at the bottom left by the wooden pole. The OnePlus offers a good balance, I think, and has the most natural colors here you can definitely see this pattern from left to right of darker to lighter shadows. I am impressed by the OnePlus's balance though between the other two. In fact, the iPhone is definitely overexposed here and looks a bit unrealistic. It really is interesting how in some shots, particularly in good light, there's very little in it between the three phones. What you can do with the S20 and OnePlus though is shoot in their full resolution. There's not much change, although particularly on the S20, it does become noticeably sharper and more detailed. The OnePlus is surprisingly soft, even at 48 megapixels, and the iPhone stuck at 12, while reasonably sharp, is the noisiest. 
I think the real test of modern phone cameras though is in trickier lighting. So as the sun goes down, I have to say I think the OnePlus has nailed this. The iPhone has overexposed the foreground and so the sky is completely blown out. The S20 is just way too dark and we lose a lot of detail in the tree. Okay, back home now, it's about 8 p.m. and I think the iPhone wins here in terms of color and also detail, not just of the flowers and the vase, but you can also make out the texture on the blinds at the back. So I'm playing a bit of the FF7 remake at the moment. If you've played it, I'd love to hear what you make of it in the comments. And I think the S20 has struggled to focus a little on the bright Final Fantasy text. It's much crisper on the OnePlus and the iPhone. Just looking at the blue light on the PS4 controller though, you can see how strong the iPhone's HDR can be. It does better expose the plant and the wall at the back though, but I kind of like the balance you get from the OnePlus. I actually do use a microfiber cloth to clean the camera lenses before every photo, but only the OnePlus doesn't show any haloing. And while all three are in regular photo mode, not portrait or aperture, to its credit, the S20's depth sensor is proving its worth. You can see how the keys are less blurred than the background. It's that gradual bokeh that you get with a proper DSLR. I don't know what to say here, this is an absolutely horrible photo across the board, but it's a low light portrait shot and I think I hate all three of them. Although I'm tempted to say the S20 is the best. The iPhone is certainly the brightest, although again the super powerful HDR just gets rid of all the shadows. So I think the S20 is the best of a bad bunch. So then, let's compare night mode. Firstly, this is a regular photo, and I specifically turned off the iPhone's automatic night mode. It genuinely is almost pitch black, and although the OnePlus is brighter, it is at the expense of a lot more noise. Then with night mode, the iPhone really comes into its own. It's almost magic how good it is. The OnePlus is reasonably bright, but it's noisy and the colors are way off, and the S20's night mode didn't really do much. Now this is a really interesting night mode shot, and the S20 doesn't seem to handle the ambient light as well, giving everything a purple hue. The Google Hub on the iPhone is blown out though, but the rest of the photo offers more detail than the others. Just look at the Cards Against Humanity text for example. Another night mode photo, and again the S20 is struggling. Its colors are off, it's over sharpened, it just doesn't look good. I like the bokeh on the OnePlus and the colors are nice too, but I think the iPhone is the best overall. Again, there's a lot more detail on the texture of the wood and the baseball. But let's go outside for a second, again using night mode. And I had to double check I hadn't mixed up the photos here, but in a complete reversal of the low light video we saw earlier, the S20 and iPhone shots appear to have traded places, with the S20 now looking flatter but better exposed, the OnePlus again just gets the color wrong, and the iPhone now has blown out the highlights. This time using night mode with the ultra wide lens, again the S20 comes out on top, bright, well exposed, good detail. The OnePlus is still let down by coloring, and the iPhone's is far too dark. Now this is very tricky lighting, but I think the OnePlus actually wins here. Seriously, these phones keep treading blows, but everything on the OnePlus is exposed correctly, the color is the most natural, the iPhone has really struggled with the highlights. Credit to the S20 as well, although there's an unnatural yellow tint to the colors. How about astrophotography? Well, on a tripod, all three pointing straight up in night mode, plus turning on the OnePlus's tripod mode in the settings, I think the iPhone is the clear winner, and none of these are edited. But then I wanted to go a step further and bring in the Huawei P40 Pro and the Pixel 4 XL. Again, all phones are on a tripod in their respective night modes. I actually thought the P40 Pro would do a better job here as I had been impressed by the Mate 30 Pro last year. But the Pixel 4, as you would expect from its ridiculous four minute long multiple exposures, is breathtakingly good. With the iPhone in second place, and I think actually the OnePlus coming in third, now how about selfies, starting in low light, and actually the OnePlus is clearly the most detailed, although I do like the iPhone's more natural color. I have to say though, I'm shocked by the S20. I've not edited any of these photos, but I genuinely think, given my recent Exynos vs Snapdragon video, that maybe it's the Exynos to blame. In better light, things do improve though across the board, but with the OnePlus I think coming in last place. It has an unnatural purple hue to it, I kind of look ill. The S20 and iPhone do a much better job. Switching to a portrait mode selfie, all three have a nice depth of field, although again I can't ignore the pretty bad colors from the OnePlus. Another example, and I think the iPhone wins. The OnePlus is sharp, but still the colors are off. And with the S20, I have to say I've been struggling with focus issues for a while on it, and particularly with the selfie camera. One more selfie portrait, and this time the S20's got the focus right, and it looks good. The OnePlus is disappointing again. My t-shirt, skin tones, it all just looks really washed out. The iPhone has the narrowest field of view, but I think the best looking selfie. And finally, a quick selfie video. Now both the S20 and iPhone are being shot at 4K30 here, whereas the OnePlus 8 Pro still maxes out at 1080p with a selfie camera.
So I think I've subjected you guys to enough of my selfies and portrait shots for one day, but which camera do you think came out on top overall? The S20 Ultra, the OnePlus 8 Pro, or the iPhone 11 Pro Max? Vote in my little poll at the top right, and let me know why you think so in the comments below. As you can probably tell, these videos do take quite a while to make, so uh, if I could get a little thumbs up or maybe even a cheeky subscribe from you guys, that would be incredible. While I've got you guys, just a quick shout out to Ryan over at Beginners Tech. He's an awesome dude who not only has a great channel, although I can barely understand anything he says thanks to his Scottish accent, but what I will say is, it's definitely not in the best position. It does kind of look up your nose. But he's a good friend and also an NHS nurse who's been transferred to help coronavirus patients. If you've got a second, give him a sub. Let's get him to 100K so we can get that fancy YouTube plaque. And hats off to everyone out there who's a carer, nurse, doctor, or anyone that's helping others.